Okay, I'm back. Just poured myself some more some more whiskey. And so we, we can continue with the second part of of my birth of the universe story. Or well we've we've discussed the birth of the universe, so now we're moving into the birth of our planet and where we come from. So where we left off 4.5 billion years ago, the earth was born out of the guts of a dying star and so we have the sun our, our star and the earth orbiting our star our sun but back then 4.5 billion years ago the earth was a really very hostile environment so still you know the, back then there was a lot of these space rocks um, crashing into earth in, in the form of, of meteorites so there, there's a lot of asteroids and you know it's, it's just a crazy messed up place back 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 then back um, 4.5 billion years ago um so the the earth there's lava spewing out of the core of the earth it's you know the hot sense of the earth and there's there's meteorites crashing into the earth and it's a hostile really bad place back then but continue again we we're talking about in, in million years continue couple of million years and probably about five million five hundred million years and things started to to calm down on earth so um, again most of other meteorites um, already um, crashed into the earth or they they um, attract each other and form larger rocks and then at some stage they can also get set in a steady orbit around either the earth or, or, or the sun while we're on this, uh, um, at some stage during this hostile period of, of um, the Earth's um, history, a, a meteorite crashed into Earth, a, a really big one, and with a large, huge force, and it sort of broke off a piece of, of what we know as planet Earth. And, you know, a big chunk, and that's, that's our moon, um, orbiting, so it, that, that then... Um, got set in a steady orbit around planet Earth because of gravity. Anyways, back to when it was a bit calmer. So no more um, meteorites, or there's still meteorites crashing into Earth, but a lot less. And things settled down a bit, so much so that um, hydrogen and oxygen combined and formed water. And so finally when water formed, then there was Earth was calm, and we, we, we got seas and water formed, and then somewhere, somehow, not sure yet, but the first organic life formed, or the first replicators formed. And okay, even though we are not 100% sure where and how this happens, we have many theoretical models of how this could happen plausible models models that make sense um, and so as long as we have models that can make sense it means there's there's plausible solutions to how this could have happened and we don't need an intelligent designer or divine intervention or or magic to make life we have plausible models of how this could have happened so some of these models take for instance within within the seas where there's these hot um, hot air vents because of the core of the earth with this hot core and these, these vents in within the oceans deep deep down in the ocean there's hot vents um, so there's enough energy um, and, and, and there's also the right type of molecules and, and environment for these first replicators to actually form so the right ingredients for life, can I say? So there's there's models for life starting deep in the in the deep oceans near these um, hot exhaust vents. Another option could be in shallow waters on top of the earth. Um, so where the water is in contact with kind of the atmosphere. We didn't have an atmosphere yet, but the, you know the molecules just outside the water. And again in this scenario lightning or, or something like that could have been the spark the catalyst for the first replicators to form a, a third 
kind of model theory holds that life maybe didn't even start on Earth. Like I said back then, there, there were still meteorites crashing into Earth, not as many as before, but meteorites crashing, it could have even been way back before that. But imagine life sitting on the back, catching a ride on one of these meteorites crashing on Earth. So the first organism, first replicator was already on a meteorite that crashed into Earth and it brought life to Earth. So, so maybe we are all aliens. We always talk about the aliens out there. Maybe we, we are all from, from somewhere else. So there's different models for how life could have started. We might never know exactly which model is the correct one. It's, um, because we can't go back in time and see what happened. But as long as there's plausible models of how this could have happened, any one of them could be true. And so we, we can sort of accept that while there's models of how this could have happened, we always take the, the easiest sort of explanation or, or way something happened. We, we don't need magic. That's actually my point. We don't need magic for life. So imagine the first, so I'm going to get into life, but for now, let's imagine the first replicator. So I can see my, I'm turning red because of the whiskey. But anyways, um, what I mean by a replicator is, so imagine just some molecule, so this, uh, uh, some or other early molecule. And the whole purpose of this mole molecule is to replicate itself. You have this molecule and if it, it gets in contact with something else it needs. So let, let's say it's, it's, we have molecule A and if it gets into contact with molecule B, A replicates itself. And it touches another B and it replicates itself. So the purpose of this replicator is to, just to replicate itself. And that, that's, that's kind of the basis, the building blocks of the first, of the, the beginning of life. So what you need is this first replicator in this primordial soup in, in, the, in the water. So happening in the water, you have this first molecule that, uh, that or, or set of molecules, you know, um, this first kind of replicates. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how it looks or what, what it needed, but we have a replicator. It gets in contact or it has some other catalyst to, to catalyze this replication process. Now imagine also that not all the replications happens perfectly. So it doesn't necessarily make a hundred percent copy of itself. You can get mutations, what we call mutations. So that's where it is. I can say some error in, in this replication process. So instead of copying a hundred percent copy of making a hundred percent copy of itself, there's a small error that creeps in and most, most mutations will probably be bad. And, this one we will not be able to replicate, but imagine, just imagine one of these mutation, mutated replicators. This mutation gives an, gives an advantage to, the, to this replicator. Again, we call this, let's say, replicator A. Um, and so the, the initial one is replicator A, and it needs molecule B as the catalyst for its replication. Now we get, um, the mutated replicator, call it C. So we have C now, replicator C. No, let, let's call it, let's call it, no, oh, okay, let's stick with C. So we have replicator C, and this replicator, as a catalyst to, to replicate itself, needs molecule D as the catalyst. And there's a lot more D, an abundance of D in, in this early universe. So you can see that there will then be more um, replicated C's because there's more D's. It's, it's easier for C to replicate. And, and I, I hope you can see why I'm going with this. This is a start of evolution through natural selection. So this first replicator, so it, 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 you have this first replicator, there's a mutated one, C, and this one has an advantage. And because of this advantage, there will be you know, in the next generations, there will be more C's. One of these replicated C's 
Well, in, in, in gener generations after that, there can be a mutated C, we can call F or whatever, with a new advantage. And, you know, and, and this is, this is evolution via natural selection. So you, there's these mutations that, that creeps into the replication process. And in some cases, these mu mutations can give the host an advantage. An advantage in the sense that it can produce more replication. It's, it's fitter. So what, it, I don't want to use survival of the fittest, but if you think in, in, in that direction, um, it's fitter. It, it can e more easily reproduce and make more copies of itself. And that's the, the beginning of, of life. So we have these replicators. And if you continue this process for four billion years, three and a half billion years, not sure, but I mean, if we're talking billion years, it's, it's a really, really long time. And it's, it's a small accumulation of these advantage, advantages that happens. And after three and a half to four billion years, we can have humans as, as the result of this amazing process. All it needs is sign, replication, and, and mutations. But just again, people will always ask, so why, why is there still monkeys when humans evolve from monkeys? Back to our early replicators, when you get replicator C, it doesn't mean replica replicator A dies out. Repli replicator A can still be there. There's still molecule B for it to bind to to replicate. C has just got a new advantage and a new molecule to bind to. And the same with us and, and monkeys or apes. We didn't evolve from apes or monkeys. We have a common ancestor. So we have a common, let's say, um, replicator A. And from that, one version of the mutations went to B and A continued to evolve also. So A changed into C. So there's this, we have a common replicator somewhere in our history, but we evolved in different directions and then at some stage well in my story at some stage in this evolution process um, we evolved we humans um, and and the brain is also a result of evolution our ability to ask questions of the universe so the, these, these questions we were talking about now and the fundamental questions like why are we here and where did we come from? Where did all, where and how did all of this start? So the big, big bang and all of this, we, in a way we are, remember I, always, I also say that your building blocks, like I said, um, we are made of, of carbon and, 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 and oxygen and hydrogen, the same building blocks as the universe. So we are elements of the universe. Your, the particles inside your body were present at the birth of the universe 13.8 billion years ago. So, in a way, we are, this is a quote I heard from um, Bill Nye, Bill Nye, Bill Nye the science guy, you maybe know him as Bill Nye the science guy, but um, we are, in a way, the universe acknowledging itself so we are the universe thinking about the universe we are part of the universe we are the universe the building blocks of the universe forms us questioning and asking fundamental questions about the universe it's it's a crazy concept but oh so cool so given all of this the universe and and everything out there it's so much more mysterious and crazy and and mind blog boggling and awe inspiring than than most fairy tales and and the universe is a crazy place but but so interesting so fun to to learn about and and discover there's so much still to discover but we are doing so well as as a civilization to ask these questions universe asking questions about itself that's what we are and what we do and and it's 
it's crazy all of this, but the point is we can explain in some sense most of what's going on and who we are, where we're from. So stay tuned for my next videos and we'll go we'll we'll go deeper into the universe the meaning of life and everything. Till next time.